Jolene with Homestitch Redecor. I'm so glad you found the channel. Stick around, let's go learn something. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to create this gorgeous jelly roll rug um, or strip rug, whichever you like to call it. Uh, the original pattern is done by RJ Designs and uh, go purchase a pattern. I'll put a link in the description for you. Okay, to start this project, you're either going to need to buy a jelly roll, uh, which contains 40 uh, two and a half inch strips, or you're going to need to cut your own strips. I almost always cut my own strips just due to the volume that I'm making. Um, and then you're going to need a non-slip mat, uh, your rotary cutter, and a ruler. So just line your fabric up and we're going to cut uh, with the fabric. So this is a bolt. This is uh, end to end, your salvage is up here and you need the whole length. So just measure it off for two and a half inches and give it a slice. And there you go, there's one of them. Uh, so if you just buy coordinating fabric in a line of prints, you can cut your own um, less expensively than buying your own jelly rolls, uh, but whichever you want to do is fine. You'll need 40 width of fabric strips at two and a half inches. All right, now we're going to sew our strips end to end. Uh, so we need to attach them in one uh, straight line. So what you do first is lay down your material um, face side up and then grab your next piece of material and make a corner face side down. So the two good sides are together. We're just gonna straight stitch on the diagonal. It's pretty easy to do. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just gonna go across there, grab our next piece. Same thing, face side up. The next section, face side down. Create your corner, pivot, drop your feed dogs, and sew your diagonal. And then once we've got it done, you can see once you turn it, it'll actually be straight and we'll trim off this excess here in the next step. Okay, now that you've got your strips all sewn end to end, uh, they look like this. And what we need to do is uh, just trim this off, you know, to a nice quarter inch. I'm gonna do this for the entire length of the strips. And then I just give it a little uh, shot here at best press. Let that sit for one second and iron over the seam so it lays flat. You can trim off all your ends right now too. Just makes the next step of sewing everything together just that much easier. And now when we flip this over, you can see it's all nice and straight. And so you just need to do that for all of the strips. Okay, so what are we gonna use to uh, stuff the rug? You can buy Pelon batting on Amazon or at your local quilt store. It's really great. Uh, it comes in pre-cut strips for the jelly roll rugs. And I'll put a link in the description so you can find yours easy peasy. And uh, you can also use your own batting. I like to buy really high quality, really stiff batting. Um, the more expensive I think is just the better. Um, it lasts longer in the wash and it doesn't twist and turn when you're making the rug. So look for something um, that's got some, you know, substantial stiffness to it. And then I use this Fiskars uh, 65 millimeter rotary cutter. And the reason I like the 65 millimeter for this project is because when I'm buying batting off the bolt, there's uh, four layers here and the 45 millimeter just uh, has a little trouble getting through the cut. So I try to buy the bigger, um, rotary cutter and once again I'll put a link in the description so just line your ruler up to two and a quarter because your strips are going to be two and a half you want this a tiny bit smaller and run your rotary cutter through and you'll see that it actually goes really nicely this doesn't have to be perfect so don't worry too much um, if you're off a little bit one way or the other now that you have your batting sewn into strips you need to sew it uh, lengthwise and I like to zigzag just like this, end to end together until I have enough 
to do a rug. I know that others say uh, they skip this step and that's fine. I just don't skip this step. I do it. I want to make sure that nothing wiggles and any chance I can get to eliminate a problem, I do that. So maybe do that. Once we've got the strips sewn end to end, now we need to sew them uh, either around your pillow batting uh, that you've bought the foam uh, strips ordered off of Amazon. I've put a link in the description below for that. Um, or with the batting strips that you cut at two and a quarter inches. Another fun tool is this Jelly Roll Sasher uh, by Pauline Rogers, and I can put a link in for this as well. And what you do is you line up your batting or your pellon strips on top of your fabric um, and then thread it through your uh, Jelly Roll Sasher and just kind of fold it in and, and pull it down and you'll see it just lines everything up as you go and then you fold it one more time and just straight stitch and this takes forever but it's kind of fun so you know watch something on Netflix all right so now we're ready to sew the jelly roll rug itself and what we're gonna do is just choose a starting point within your first strip of colors and fold it over in half and make sure that your folded line butts up against um, the knot folded line here and we're going to just start sewing. So I line it up and I don't start right at the very top. I uh, basically start about an inch down, drop my feed dogs and I'm just going to immediately reverse to stitch those few places down. Now the reason I do that is it's easier to reverse from there than it is to just go forward. And what you want to do now is make sure that this folded edge is always tucked, butted up right against this, um, gosh, I don't even know what to call that, against the unfinished edge here. So just keep sewing, sewing, sewing. And in a minute here, we're gonna to get to the corner. You want to have your width set as high as possible on your machine and a good jeans needle. And you're going to just go really, really, really slow. So now when we've got to the corner, um, the most important part is you want to tuck and fold around the corner. Keep this as flat as possible. If you need to back stitch a stitch or two as you go to make sure it's down, that's fine. But just squish and push until everything is flat. Go super duper slow. Turn the corner here a little bit. Make sure you're not pulling your fabric. Turn it again maybe one back stitch, turn it again. And sometimes I even just, you know, give this side a little push with my finger here. The first few rows are the most important. And you'll see here, I've got this one bedded right up against it. And you definitely don't want any tension on this part, the feeding in part. Clip off these little stitches, or sorry, little threads, not stitches. And see how I'm just gonna push this just a wee little bit so the outside of it is laying flat. You wanna make sure you're doing that on every single round and going super duper slow around the corners. And again, you want to make sure the outside is flat. So if you have to push the inside in, do that. And again, nothing is ever going to be perfect. We're going to iron this. 
If it's twisted at the start, it'll always be twisted. So make sure this is loose. Go slow so nothing um, is pulling on one side of this or the other. Okay, we've been working for a few rounds now and I'm getting to the point that I definitely want to iron around the corner. So I'm just going to slowly approach this last corner uh, before I hit the iron and just do a couple little back stitches here so it'll tack down and we're going to pull this away, clip the threads off and you can see it's got a couple little folds in it. We want to just make sure that everything gets ironed down flat. And while we uh, go and iron our stuff, we're going to stop for our, our treat of the day, which is the dark chocolate orange from the Spice Cabinet. I am going to put a link for this company down below. It's a local Alberta company, and they make the best uh, hot chocolate. I will show you some different ones as we go along. Okay, so these are the first few rounds of your rug, and you can see here it's got a couple little waves in it. Um, so I have my iron preheated and I'm just going to come over here to the ironing station, hit this sucker with some steam, make everything lay down as flat as possible. Um, you can also use best press. It's actually awesome for this project. If you don't want to know what it is, um, I'll put a link in the video uh, to how you can get it. Uh, just off of Amazon. And so now you can see it's laying down pretty flat and we're going to take it back to the machine and do some more. So we've brought the rug back from the iron and we're just going to line up where we left off, drop our feed dogs, put a couple stitches in, do a few back stitches, and then continue around the corner. Once again, just kind of make sure that the outside is flat and the only way I find I can do that um, is by squishing a little bit on the inside. And another great thing is, uh, you know, you guys just buy really quality fabrics whenever possible. Um, I know it's tough, it's budgets and everything, but the better quality fabric I buy, uh, the easier this rug is to sew. I mean, I have wasted so much time and cried so many tears learning how to get this um, to a point where I can easily make a rug and it lays flat every single time. Um, and the only way I've found to do that is to uh, buy really good quality material. So we're just gonna go round and round and round. And anytime you see the rug start to wave a little bit, um, even if it's after one round, uh, from this point, make sure you go over, take it back to the iron and press it all down and then bring it back and start over. So here you guys, this is the benefit I wanna show you of buying really good fabric. Um, we're kind of like on round, I don't know, six or seven here. And as I'm rounding the corner now, I have pressed this uh, twice. But as you can see, when I'm rounding this corner, pretty much at this stage, everything is laying completely flat. Now, there's a good chance if I just do this slow enough and uh, watch for waves and flatten things down as I go, I may not need to iron this project again until it's done. Um, another thing to do is, you know, try to have an inset table where the machine sits lower and that way the weight of the fabric isn't pulling one way or the other. And this uh, feed in always needs to have, uh, it needs to be loose. There can't be any tension on that whatsoever. And just keep going round and round and round. And we'll see you back here in a little bit. So here we are, we're at the end of the rug. I've just got a little bit of the tail end here left to sew. And I just wanted to show you guys how flat this rug is uh, coming out. Basically, this is the result of buying good material. Um, the cheap material, it almost always will twist and turn and you will get puckers and waves and everything and um, you will cry. 
I also wanted to mention to you guys that I'm sure you saw in the video for this project, I like to use my Singer Heavy Duty Machine. Uh, the reason I like this machine is it is a workhorse. It just keeps going and going and going. I have sewn uh, hundreds of rugs. I put them into stores. I sell them online. And for this project, I really need a machine that just turns on and no matter what, it's working. You can get replacement parts for it as long as you keep it, um, you know, clean in the bobbin area and oiled. It just keeps going and going and going. So I'm here to tell you that you can uh, make this project with an inexpensive machine uh, because this machine is not that expensive. You can order them on Amazon. Make sure you get a heavy duty. This is uh, quite a bit of material to be sewing through. So now that we're at the end of this project, um, if you've enjoyed it and you want to see more, please hit subscribe and be sure to head on over to my website where you can find tips and tricks. Um, you can find some sewing kits, you can find some PDF downloads, and you can find uh, purchasable Cricut files as well. So if anybody's interested in that, and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks a lot. Hit smash that like button.